Joachim? You are coming into this sequel, and the, the first film is like, it, like I said earlier, it's so visually rich. This is such a memorable looking film visually. Can you talk about coming into that in the second movie? And how, what was your vision for expanding on that? Because I feel like somehow the world really did get bigger in this film. Yeah, and it's also always like a fine line also in regards to, you know, what to uh, keep from this beloved universe because you do want to keep a lot of that also, uh, you know, and what's important to the fans. And at the same time, for me as a filmmaker, it's important to make something original and take, you know, Maleficent to the next level and kind of like make Maleficent 2.0. Um, but I do think that <laughs> a lot of the, I, I feel, the, a huge part of the success of the first film uh, was that it had such a strong emotional core. And I think that was the most important thing for me to continue telling that story. You know, the story about uh, Maleficent Aurora. And, and, and that's definitely also something that I can relate to as a parent myself. And Ed, I was thinking that you've been in some really visually amazing films, but can you talk about joining this crew and some of the physical demands and how you got into character because you make a huge impression by the time you put on war paint. I was like, yes. Did I make it weird? I hope I made it a little weird. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I mean, there were so many layers to the preparation for this. Obviously, you know, before I met anybody from the cast and, and, and the crew, you know, I, cre I create uh, the character in isolation, you know, analyzing the script and doing the kind of intellectual side of it. That's one side of things. But then once I came in and we started to go through the process of prosthetics, you know, the first makeup test I did was 10 and a half hours. We got it down to about four and a half hours by the end, but, you know, going through that every morning, that process of putting on the cheekbones, the ears, the, you know, the skin and, you know, the claws finishing with the the um, contact lenses. You know, you've gone through a complete physical transformation, um, and you're so kind of physically informed by that process. And then you come out and you're standing opposite these incredible um, actors. You know, such as these guys. So it's like, you know, there's so many, so many, uh, so much process to get to the point where we we're all just standing on on set having a great old time. Can you talk about working with Angelina again? And especially kind of in the same neighborhood of character as far as like a strong, nuanced female goes. Yeah, I mean, we had a great time making Salt all those years ago. And so it was really exciting to get a chance to do stuff. You know, I mean, obviously it's completely different, but it's, yeah. but that, yeah, but you're right. You know, the, it's these very dynamic, very interesting characters. They have a really interesting relationship in, in this film. And so... Uh, um, and some of that is sort of unsaid as well and just sort of felt in the sense of connection. And so all of that was really rich. And so it was, it was, it was great to do that. <laughs> yeah. Michelle, I wanted to ask you, uh, Maleficent is, the, is a fairy tale, but yet it feels very modern and it feels very of the moment. And I wonder if you can talk about coming into this story that features, you know, three women who are very different in their power. And just the, I think the writing really stands out as to how different all these women are. Um, so yeah, I think that's one of the interesting things about this film is yes, it is um, a fairy tale, but at the same time it isn't sort of, it's a very unusual fairy tale. It's what I loved also about the first film. Um, it was so surprising and, it, um, you know, it just didn't, it, what I loved is that it kind of played in this gray area and it talked about, you know, good versus evil and, and, um, and in that we are, we, we, all of us have a little bit of everything in us and, um, and it, it, um, and I think in terms of strength and how that manifests itself, and it, it's differently in everyone. And, and one of the things we loved about, for instance, um, Aurora's character is that, you know, in, in many ways, she is ultimately the strongest and the wisest of all of us. I mean, my character is really brilliant but, and diabolical. 
but I wouldn't consider her terribly wise. Um, so I do think it's interesting the way, and uh, and I like the way the way it it plays out. Elle, I was speaking of which, I was thinking about how in the first movie your character is blessed with happiness, and yet in this movie she runs into a lot of really dark situations. But do you feel that that personality trait that she has affects how you play the character and affects her experience? Yes, I mean obviously, you know, the, in the original fairy tale, she's you know granted with these gifts when she's a baby. Um, and I think Aurora, she symbolizes the good and the kindness in the world and the acceptance. And um, obviously that was really shown in the first film because she's much, much younger and much more innocent. And um, her kind of embodying this, um, this really overwhelming love of life and want, and she kind of, she lives in between both worlds. You know, she's a human, but she is queen of the Moors and has grown um, up amongst the, the Moor folk. And so she doesn't under, she lives harmoniously with both sides. So she doesn't understand why the world can't do that. Um, and, but she's, you know, in the second film, what's so great is that she's definitely a young woman now and she's, um, She's grown up, she is stronger, she has much more conviction in herself and she's learning how to, to um, gain her independence. Um, and it, you know, the, I, I love the family theme in the movie because it's very um, realistic to real life of growing up and kind of separating from leaving the nest and, and also making your own choices in life. Um, I mean, she's obviously is disapproving of Prince Philip, <laughs> but um, you know, we know that you know, love wins, and she kind of Aurora stands up to Maleficent, which was such a very, very strong moment in the film too. I think it might be you know shocking for fans to see that because Aurora is taking charge of of her own life. So, but with kindness, which is the you know the most powerful of all. We didn't want. I mean. We didn't want Aurora to then be, you know, oh, a lot of films, they put her in armor and have a sword and she's fighting and like that makes her strong. And that isn't, that's not Aurora's true nature and that isn't necessarily true. I love that she symbolizes that for also young girls. Like I was that girl and, and I was always soft and wanted to be a mom and wanted to get married and very feminine and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And so we get to show the strength in accepting your femininity, and um, and Aurora does it in a pink dress. Angelina, what does what does this movie say about family to you? Angelina, what does what does this movie say about family to you? Because this one's all about family. Uh, it's about family. It's also about accept. It's it, well. It's about a few things to me. It is about family. And it's, it's, you know, Aurora and Maleficent were first brought together and became a family. They weren't really expecting it. Maleficent was harmed in her life and she didn't really, she'd lost herself and lost her ability to, I think, be soft or feel love. And, and the love of a child, which certainly happened for me in my life, being a mother brought out something in me that completely transformed me. And I think... Um, but we are different. We're different creatures in the film. And so it's... There are different, there are metaphors in the film, and not to be heavy about it, but always I think a good film for, for young people has these messages, and I think there's a real question in the film. We get pulled apart, people tell us, because you're not the same, you're not family. Because you're not exactly like her, you're not her mother. And that certainly strikes a chord with me. Um, and, and I think Maleficent questions whether she's good enough to be a mother, and whether she is her mother. And, uh, and so in the middle of this film, we go on different journeys and she finds herself in this idea, well, I'm like this, I was born this way, so that must be my true nature. And I think, well, I guess I'm a creature and I'm like this, so that must be my true nature. So we, we go through this period in the middle of the film where everybody's really focusing on their differences, how different we are. And we go to our own corners with our, our separate uh, you know, backgrounds or ways of being or who we are or how we're born. And and then there's a real push to say this is not how it should be, and this is not how to live, and, and diversity makes us stronger, and there must be a better way forward, and we have to come together. And so we do that in the film 
with the humans and the creatures and the morpho coming together. We do that as a family and we come together and we fight against this separation and we, we unite and we say this is the world we choose to live in. And I think that that is a really important message. Prince Philip in this movie is really torn between his family and then sort of his chosen family, his new family. How does your character deal with that enormous conflict in that really fabulous wig? Thank you. Um, well, I, it, it's difficult because we sort of open on him in this like pre-existing mindset that it, the Ulster, the kingdom, and his family are sort of living in, and they're at a more mature level in their relationship when you want to start making sort of choices for yourself and leading a new way forward. So it's sort of coming up against that, and it's difficult when you're going up against your own sort of parents as well. So I think that's something that he struggles with continuously. And then along with Aurora, we sort of strive for change and just try and support that. And Sam, uh, Diaval has such an, a unique relationship with Maleficent. Uh, can you talk about the evolution of that relationship in this film as well as like, what's the behind the scenes? Like when you, cause I, I, I remember seeing in the, in the behind the scenes of the first film, flapping your arms and running out of a scene, like ducking down because you're, poof, turning into something else. But tell us about that evolution for this film. Well, um, one of the things I, I really enjoyed about the first one was the sort of the bickering that we had between one another. And I think that's, I think I imagine that's developed over the last six years. We've become the sort of surrogate parents of, uh, of Aurora. And Diaval is sort of one of the only ones who is brave enough to contradict her in some of her behaviors uh, or, or suggest, you know, means of being more polite or, or how humans behave. And we had a lot of fun um, playing, this, playing this sort of thing. Uh, Joachim, let's talk more about the, this new land that we're seeing, the land of the Fae. Uh, can you talk about... The, the process of creating that world, what, what were some of your initial ideas that, you came, that came to life? Yeah, <clears throat> no, I think uh, it was important for us to, to um, you know, create a bigger universe for this, for this movie. And uh, uh, in, in that sense, this is, you know, um, Maleficent's being thrown into to exile and discovers that she's not the only Dark Fae. And that universe and, and their nest of origin, so to speak, um, took a lot of planning, a lot of meetings, and, and uh, a, a lot of amazing uh, artwork. And um, I think the, the big inspiration for me and for us uh, was probably, probably uh, nature, you know, that the dark face is some, somewhat representing nature. And in that sense, we, we used um, the different biomes that you find in nature and, and, and created uh, uh, groups within the Dark Fae, within the Maleficent, so to speak. Uh, you know, there were tundra, there were uh, forest, jungle, and, and desert. And, and everything became centered around that and designed around that, and also their habitats in the nest that they are living. Please give it up for Ed Scrine, Chiwetel Thank you Edgerport, very much, everyone. Thanks Michelle for coming. Pfeiffer, Angelina Jolie, Elle Fanning, Harris Dickinson, Sam Riley, and Yoakam Roning.